What's up guys, this episode I'm excited to be talking about time traveling like in Back to the Future. What's up guys, today we're gonna to be talking about using Active Support's time helpers in your Rails test suite to have predictable tests that have to deal with times and dates. Now this is something that is kind of just complicated because time is always moving forward. So in your test suite, you can actually stub out the time.now, the date time.now, and the date.today methods using these helpers built into the Rails test suite. You don't need to use an external gem like TimeCop, but these and TimeCop will both help you write predictable tests with anything that relates to times. So let's take a look at an example of where this is problematic and why these exist. So let's write a quick test here for the users created timestamp should be set to the current time. So if we were to write a test for this, it might be something very simple like set equal uh, time.current, the current time with the time zone and all of that. We'll have a user that we create and then we'll ask it for the created at timestamp. Now, when you read this, it seems like it would work. Create a user record that's going to set the current timestamp to that uh, created at attribute, then we'll check and make sure it, it matches the current time. However, because inserting things to the database and running code takes time, that is actually not going to pass. If we run this test, Rails test, test models, user test, it's going to fail and it's gonna tell us that it didn't match, but it looked the same and to us it looks the same as well because the seconds haven't actually passed. Our code ran in milliseconds or microseconds and so that time has moved just a fraction and doesn't match exactly. And so our test does not pass. But if we were to actually freeze time here, we can run this test again and time.current is always going to return the same value and now our test pass. So we can know for sure that user created at was set to time.current inside of active record and this matches. So this comes into play anytime you're building code that has to do with times and dates. One of those examples is when your users might have a trial on their account. We have a user model um, that we have defined a simple trial on and basically we set this trial ends at seven dot days from now into the future. So that's going to set it as a time in the future, seven days from the current time. Now we also have this method to check if the user is currently on a trial or not. And so we use the current time and the trial ends at uh, to calculate that. So if we wanted to write a test for the seven day free trial and make sure that it was seven days, we could have a um, has seven day free trial. And we could do the same thing here where we assert that the seven days from now is the trial ends at timestamp. This is gonna run into the exact same issue. If we run this test, we'll have the no visible difference error, but there is an actual difference. And so we would need to freeze time for this as well. So this is going to pass now, but we can also use some other methods if we don't want to set this to the exact current time. So we can use travel and say one dot day into the future and that will pass the test as well. This is going to travel based upon the current time plus one dot day, you can actually do this as negative days as well and that should work as well. It will just move back one dot day from the current time. It's all relative to the current time as it does this and then it will freeze it to that. And no matter what you do here, it will work but you can also pass this a block, but you don't have to. So you could say travel one day and that will step out the time and then set it for the rest of the test. Now, if you do this in a block, it will do it for the duration of the block. So anything after this will actually have a different current time. So that can be handy if you wanna make sure that your code is being run in a specific context for just a certain period and it will be reset. So then we can write a test for on trial and we can make a very simple test here. We'll say user equals user.create 
and we want to assert that the user is on trial. If we run this test, we should see that it passes without any changes because it's relative to the current time. However, if we want to test if the user is off trial after trial period, we need to actually force the time to be into the future. So if we did a user.create here, we actually need to travel, say, 14 days into the future, and then we can assert not user on trial. And so if we run that test, it will pass because we have moved past the seven day trial length. So this works great, but there are also times where you might need to specify an exact time and date into the future or in the past that you wanna run your test at. So instead of using travel, you can use travel to and you can give it a specific time or date. So if we say travel to 14 days from now, that will create the date and time uh, for 14 days in the future and then set it to that exact date. And the same thing works here. You can use the block if you would like, or you can set it to just travel to a specific time. So if we run this test, it should still pass as well. So the last thing I wanna talk about here is that if you're using the VCR gem, which we've talked about in a previous episode, to record your API requests, you can actually use the VCR's cassette recorded at timestamp to travel to and replay your tests. So for example, I've been writing some tests for Stripe, and instead of doing trials in the app, I actually do trials on the Stripe subscription, and I wanted to verify that those trials were actually set in Stripe. You can use VCR to record your API request to say, create the Stripe subscription with a trial. But the first time that you run your VCR test, it's not going to have a cassette. It's going to make real API requests and record them. So we can actually travel to the current time if the VCR current cassette originally recorded that timestamp is nil. So what this will do is allow us to actually make a request to the real API the first time around, record it with VCR, and our test will be frozen to a timestamp. And then when we replay it, it will actually be frozen to the timestamp we originally ran the VCR tests at. This can actually help you test your API responses and their timestamps with your test suite and make them a bit more reliable. It's not perfect because the requests take a bit of time to run themselves. And so there are going to be fractions of seconds and things that will take time and be a little bit different. So you can't match perfectly, but at least you can be within a range of a couple seconds at the worst case if your tests are slow. So that is all there is to running your tests with freezing time and time traveling. All of that's really cool to talk about as well, but it's very, very simple to use and easy to work with because Rails makes this extremely easy and so does TimeCop. So take a look at either one of those options if you need to test timestamps in your application.